gorgeous souls welcome to cosmo muse tarot and uh, a reading i am doing today inspired by coming into an eclipse season this is a timeless reading so you may be coming here at a time when there is not an up upcoming eclipse season um, but maybe something in your own chart or astrology is going through a big frequency shift so what we are going to be looking at is sort of like what is the new chapter coming in eclipse seasons tend to be wild card energy they reorient us they bring endings and beginnings so we kind of want to look at yeah like what is the big insight that will be coming through whether that's through literal kind of reflection and insight or through some shadow work usually there's some big understanding that sinks in and then we sort of get pushed into the new direction like a tuning fork <laughs> putting us on our more you know like a more aligned path or into that next thing but to just contain all of that I'm just sort of titling this like the next chapter. So we are going to do three piles and I'm going to pick a card from this Nocturna Oracle uh, to represent the three piles to choose from. It is possible that the eclipses will be hitting multiple things in your chart or affecting multiple things. So feel free if you are called to more than one pile, uh, that is just fine. Okay, one more. Okay, so we've got fireflies. Let me straighten these out a little. Okay, so firefly, fireflies is pile one, lavender is pile two, and cactus is pile three. You can pause here if you'd like to sort of tune into these three piles, feel into if any of them are drawing you in or how many are drawing you in whatever feels aligned for you when you're ready timestamps are in the descriptions and you can jump to your reading or readings all right i will see you in your pile hello pile one welcome to your reading we're going to look at what's coming in from a next chapter kind of wild card energy that's uh, like a tuning fork kind of putting you on a more aligned path for you um, oftentimes when this happens we get great insight into sort of where we've been and why and that's what I initially want to look at so fireflies the card you picked is the thing that is kicking us off into that and I'm actually going to read from the book for this so it says inspiration, nostalgia, illumination, brevity. While fireflies aren't a thing where I grew up, I always associated them with nostalgia, childhood memories, and carefree summer evenings. The firefly, firefly symbolism, understandably so, revolves around illumination and inspiration and, and explores the concept of light coming from within. This card may resonate if you are the creative type, such as a painter, writer, photographer, etc. However, fireflies typically live short lives, merely a few weeks, which reminds us never to never take each day for granted. So definitely this feels like um, some illumination coming in, some understanding coming in through sort of reflecting back on life, uh, maybe some big aha moment or insight into yourself has recently hit and that's allowed you to go back in time with that new lens of understanding and be like, oh, that's why this was like this or why I was like that or why that situation turned out that way. There's so many understandings we come into as we mature and go into further into adulthood that we can then 
look back on our lives and have like a more whole understanding of certain things that, you know, as, as children, we don't always fully grasp. But that being said, I still think this reflection is going to bring you into some beautiful nostalgia as well as some illumination of things that were maybe a little confusing or that you just didn't tune into or something, you know. Um, but something about doing this, something about this reflection and this, this aha and understanding is exactly what's needed to give you new inspiration. And I feel like it's going to be kind of like this, this um, spark that kind of like comes quickly and goes quickly. And it's leading, you know, it's like um, cookie crumbs leading you towards something. It's not exactly about the inspiration itself, but that inspiration is is taking you somewhere, leading you somewhere. So let's look a little bit more through some tarot cards about this aha coming in though um, with fireflies. What do we need to understand about the past before this next chapter comes in? Wow, that's crazy because the Six of Cups is that exact card. If I were to from the definition that this deck gave fireflies, if I were to assign a tarot card to it, it would be Six of Cups. It's about nostalgia. That's fascinating. And then we've got Nine of Discs. Let's get one more. And the Star. Yeah, this all aligns that um, the star showing that new hope, that new spark of inspiration definitely coming through there. Um, but I think this nine of discs, it feels like it's talking about what this nostalgia might be in relation to. And that could have a lot to do with a sense of... Um, I don't know, like maybe you're coming into a greater sense of your purpose by doing this um, reflection and illumination and through revisiting the past, through going back into nostalgia with, with new lenses, childhood memories with new lenses. Um, it's helping to uncover something about your purpose or how to connect more beautifully to your purpose, um, connect to a sense of purpose and um, uh, like what are your skills, what are your processes, who are you supposed to be um, in a way that feels more pleasurable too. So it's like, yeah, like a lot of ahas and deep understandings coming through about who you are, but not just that, like connecting to it because it feels aligned and it feels right. Being able to connect to that who you are in a much more pleasurable way. So there's maybe something from the past that's been getting in the way of you really seeing your true purpose or really enjoying your true purpose or maybe a bit of both. Um, but these understandings coming through are giving you a lot of new hope for your future, a lot of new brightness, a lot of, of eagerness and excitement and like a sense of feeling refreshed. I'm like, oh, finally, thank God. Yeah, that's what that feels like, really cool. Okay, let's now look at where this new chapter coming in, what, just like a little bit of a glimpse. I don't think Spirit will let us see a whole lot about that. Um, I mean, we'll see, but all I'm asking for for you guys is kind of a glimpse into this, the essence. <laughs> Ooh. Greater cycles. This is definitely about finding a more grand connection. Oh, I need to push these up more. Like a more grand connection to life, a more intentional connection to life. 
that helps you to feel life as a little bit more more grand and more expansive and more exciting so something exciting coming in here that's very cool okay i may i also have the book for this rooted woman oracle that is kind of like shows aspects of journey stages of journey aspects of journey types of archetypes on journey um let's see if we can get any clues through this as well so cairn portal to the mystery and cairns are where the celtic um, people would bury especially like important people to the community um they're sort of like um underground there's like a mound on top of them and it goes underground and it's very i don't know it's kind of a sacred marker okay let's see if i can find the guidebooks description for this okay at some point or indeed at many points along the journey of our lives we'll find ourselves experiencing a sense of awe or otherness oh that's and that definitely connects to this like um living a more grand adventurous life we tend to push our boundaries and push out into places where we can feel a little bit other because we're going out of our comfort zones um Let's see, and this is stemming from some inner necessity burning brightly at our core. If we're willing to appreciate, um, oh, sorry, to apprentice ourselves to these teachers, we begin to find ourselves consumed by questions about the ultimate truth and meaning of our existence. Wow. But these are not questions which have easy answers. Perhaps the heart of the answer lies in pondering the question. The mystery of life and our place in it is something to sit with, not to solve. Mystery is unknowable to the rational mind. To be comfortable in the company of mystery is to be willing to penetrate the deep shadow of the cairn, to take a walk into the dark and sit with it for a while. Mystery uh, relieves us of a fiction that we know exactly where we're going and that we're the sole authors of the story we're living. It keeps us on our toes. When we embrace mystery, the world declares itself to be a place of potentialities and our journey through it becomes a journey of discovery. The Cairn card proposes that we give up our need for control, surrender to the mystery. It whispers and the light which it is designed to lead you out of the dark places will always be able to find you. Very cool. So tying in what we saw about like new ahas and understandings coming in, we also get the sense that that doing this connecting to this bigger more you know like connecting to something about your purpose being um, able to ask big que questions and to sit with the mystery of things not have to solve them but to dive into them and being able to you know identify this and do this in some way um, like have access to doing this in some way and having this feel very pleasurable having this be something that gives you a lot of um sense of of reverence and beauty about your life so really beautiful stuff coming up in that okay we're going to add a couple of tarot cards to this as well this little peek into the next chapter definitely adventure big questions being able to embrace the mystery of life. Then we've got Ten of Swords. And, oh, I actually know what that Ten of Swords is about. I think we can fit one more card. Yeah, Princess of Swords, yes. And the Magician, I love this for you guys. Um, okay, so to me, these two, t these two cards are talking to each other. Ten of Swords is the end of one paradigm and the entry to another paradigm, especially around living through your mind and the mind being the thing that creates 
duality and polarities and strife and anxiety and it's sort of like you are having some understanding coming in of like how you've connected to leading life that way and now that you see it you're able to kind of like surrender more into mystery and being you know like moving into the adventure of life a little bit more through soul and heart and this paradoxically really refreshing your mind and making your mind feel connected to new curiosity new potentiality um, and just just feeling like the difference that you're that you'll be feeling in this new chapter is your mind feeling on overdrive and tapped out and um just overtaxed to it feeling fresh and fertile and easy um, because you're not going to be relying on it as much it will just be a thing that holds curiosity for you and not needing to have answers right being able to live in potential, being able to live in simplicity. And then we've got the magician, which is just like that, something about all of this is like really putting you into your power to manifest so much more in life. And the difference from that sense of inspiration, that new hope and that belief in the future, being abstract, these feel like the same cards to me, like feeling bare, envisioning something but it's abstract to embodying this and this being more real and really being able to command and manifest and um just live like a more ma i don't know it's just like a more this next chapter to me just feels like a more magical connection to life the ability to not be so in mind to embrace mystery to embrace adventure to embrace simplicity at the same time as those big complex questions um, because it's like you're not having to intellectually figure it all out you can just be with it and live it and like move through the mystery without being so intellectual about it and that holding some kind of key to your pleasure and that pleasure holding the key to to really being able to like more gracefully manifest beautiful okay to end we're going to get you a priestess of light with just an ending message for you death and rebirth darkness to light it feels like a whole different version of you yeah different version of you uh, and a lighter version of you despite being more in the dark in the mystery it's um you're finding your inner light beautiful gorgeous i love this coming up for you guys and i oh i think the fireflies talked about like connecting to your inner source of light and that's the, that feels like yeah you have it you're getting it in this next adventure beautiful our next chapter all right so that's where i'm going to leave this reading if it resonated i always appreciate support likes shares subscribes uh, always grateful for kind and thoughtful comments as well and i wish you guys so much love and excitement on this next chapter i i love what i see um, side note, if you enjoy astrology, please do go check out my free astrology newsletter. Uh, there are things that I put out in it, such as like the month ahead, the astrology of the month ahead, or if a planet's changing signs, kind of what to expect, um, you know, with, with that change in, in the landscape, <laughs> cosmoscape, I guess that kind of stuff. And then there is an option to upgrade to a paid subscription as well, which gives by sign horoscopes with all of those things as well. So yeah, this is where I'm going to leave you though. And I wish you love and beauty and excitement on this next chapter. And I will see you guys in future reading. Hello, beautiful pile two. You guys picked lavender for your pile. And so in this reading, it's, it's sort of simply titled your next chapter, but it's a little bit more complex in the reading than that. I feel like when we come into kind of a frequency shift or a next chapter, things like that, we come into these deep 
moments of understanding and ahas that sort of allow it's like that's like the launching pad to be able to to enter that new paradigm shift if you will and so we want to kind of look at what that is what's what's at least coming up in that or what you're actually going through right now whatever that however that resonates for you like what is that kind of understanding that's coming in right now and how does that influence then what that next chapter is which we will look at after so for lavender that's going to hold the main energy of this kind of aha coming through this insight and i'm going to read from the book for this it's the nocturna oracle and it says peace of mind serenity relaxation the lavender is the ultimate symbol of serenity due to the relaxing feelings one gets when smelling the flowers beautiful aroma Historically, lavender was used to cure all sorts of ailments ranging from gastrointestinal issues to anxiety and is still used extensively to this day in aromatherapy. It is a flower that encourages meditation, calmness, and peace of mind. So this coming through, um, yeah, some insight coming that you're coming into may may have you like understanding your the nature of your mind more or seeing your mind but like the patterns of your mind better in a way that allow you to kind of correct some patterns or some wiring or some mentality um it's like something you're seeing about your mind is like, I don't know, it's like once you see something, you can't unsee it. And that, that inability to unsee something about your mind is really driving you to change some patterning. I think those things take time with our mind because we have these things get hardwired in. But if you can recognize something that's creating outcomes you're not loving, um, it's possible with attention and um, conscious awareness of it and really working with it. Uh, yeah, like uh, behavioral, cognitive behavioral techniques, journaling, intentional practices. Um, you really can change. And I feel like that you're seeing something in your mind that you're getting a hold of and really you may be already in the midst of doing a lot of work to kind of change some patterning to come into a place that feels more calm and peaceful and serene which is so cool like what like that's an amazing kind of understanding to be coming into who wouldn't want this kind of understanding to see certain patterns in our mind that we can then have ahas about and overcome and create a much more yeah serene peaceful calm state of mind which you know our our thoughts create our behaviors and our behaviors create certain outcomes in our lives so it's it's no small thing it's a chain reaction you changing your the way you're holding your mind which is changing your behaviors which is you know eventually and i think that will have a lot probably will show up in the next next chapter that we look at um outcomes are going to start shifting okay let's get some tarot cards to get a little bit more information here king of swords yes you are totally totally coming into control of your mind it, this does show that it's possible you've had a lot of help with this from experts or if this isn't resonating and you're like well I would like that this is indicating that there are some experts around like people the exact help you need there are experts that are accessible to you even if that's like someone who wrote a book and you get the book that uh, you know or you know if maybe you find a cognitive behavioral therapist or some kind of counsel um, but it, it just as easily could be like a book you read by an expert that like oh wow look at I 
this is a pattern I wasn't aware of that pointed towards something, but I fit these patterns and that pointing towards something really fits and wow, I can really get a hold of this now. Um, and also coming into the information you need to get a hold of it, what you can do to change, you know. Clarity, <laughs> look at this. Clarity, oh my gosh, exactly. You are getting so clear about something in your mind. Um, some way it got patterned that you're getting everything you need to change that into a much more calm, serene, peaceful mind. Bringing power over mind, mind over matter, and clarity and sharpness of mind. I love this. That's so beautiful, you guys. Okay, so let's dive into what this then sort of creates that launch pad for in terms of like a new chapter, frequency shift. Where are we going next? The seed intention. This is really being able to um, project into your future much more clearly, much more deliberately, um, to hold high intentions, high, uh, you know, goals that are very connected to the best possible version of things for you. Um, yeah, it's, it's about being able to see a future and make plans for that future. And really something coming through here for me is like being able to switch out of living a little bit in a more stressed state of like living for day to day. I'm living for today because my I'm in like a, this constant state of like um, nervous system overdrive, fight or flight, something like that. And now that I'm calm and I don't have to live for this moment, I can live for the future. And that means I can hold, um, create beautiful seeds and intentions and plans and goals for the future and build for the future and not just be reacting to today. And when you build for the future, you build life in a much more stable way. So that's super cool, um, uh, cohesive next step to me from what we've already seen. Okay, Sarah Dwin, the initiator. So this is another one where I'm going to read from the book. It's from The Rooted Woman. It's a new oracle I got. And it's it, it connects deeply with the heroine's journey and different phases of that, but also different aspects and, and characters and archetypes within that. So this is more, I think, archetypal type energy. So let's see. Um, or al oh, for this book, it's an ally for you. So, and this I think is sort of like the elder woman energy, but let's see what the book says. The initiator. In the old Welsh story of the enchantress Seridwyn, she chases uh, Gwion Bach, a young boy who has consumed three drops of potion from her cauldron of inspiration a potion which she herself brewed and which she intended for her son. Her long pursuit of the boy makes it possible for him to discover and draw on the new knowledge that he's acquired in order to shapeshift, to try to escape her. But the dark goddess cannot be eluded. Finally, after submitting him to tests of his newly acquired prowess, Serdwin catches Guyan Bach, that's probably pronounced wrong, <laughs> swallows him up and rebirths him as Taliesin, who becomes the greatest of all prophets and bards. The story of Seridwen presents the cauldron as a symbolic womb, the source of rebirth and transformation. She's the keeper of the cauldron, and her story reflects the role of women in our native mythologies as the source of life and creative power. To drink from Seridun's cauldron of inspiration, then, is an initiation, the beginning of a long and difficult rite of passage and of the metamorphoses 
which inevitably and inevitably must follow. Sarah Duin remain reminds us that as a consequence of even the most challenging initiations, there's the possibility of great renewal. Have courage, drink from the cauldron of inspiration, even if you don't quite believe that the potion is meant for you, and even if you don't know the nature of the transformation it will require of you. To me, this is, um, you know, the new beginning and the seed very much so connect. And I feel like the drinking of the cauldron or of the inspiration is you starting to form intentions that are much more long-term and stable and future-oriented. And that being something that really, you know, it's new to you. You've, you know, like this is showing in some way, at least you've been living more in this day-to-day -day mode. But to be living for the future brings its own sets of challenges and, um, you know, growing patterns and, and uh, rewards with it. But this is sort of like, um, drink from this inspiration, believe in, in initiating those kinds of seeds that you can plan for tomorrow, that you can hold intention about your future and create the future you want through living for your future, um, through living a little bit more calm, intentional, more serene, more less reactionary and more planned. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be an adventure to kind of shift into that kind of energy, I think. But um, yeah, it's what's newly birthing for you here. Okay, let's get a few tarot cards to add to this next chapter for you. Feeling that one. Four of Swords. Again, this is a reflection of being able to really um, still your mind, meditate um, from that calm mind. So much more is possible. Um, so much more clarity comes in and stability of mind. This also for is all about stability, really being able to build, build more intentionally towards goals you you have seeds of intention you create because your mind is more stable um, two of cups so this next chapter could also be bringing in some like divine unions for you uh, whether that's like um, a love relationship or business partner or you know, something where it's just like um, the right match, the right person, the right union of things, and it being very emotionally like, like a soul connection. And maybe you're already with people like that, and this is just saying like this will just grow and deepen and even further be a really beautiful thing. Um, because you're more, more stable, this can become more stable too. And then justice. Yeah, more balance. Look at her. She's just in her power. She's strong. You will go from having clarity of mind to being able to wield that clarity, hold that clarity and use it um, as a tool, um, knowing what to do with it. And that bringing and establishing a, a much more balanced life. Yeah, that's so gorgeous, you guys. Okay, last message. We're going to get a pre message from the Priestesses of Light. Just kind of a leaving departure energy for you. Deep emotions, unknown feelings, past life influences. So this also to me is saying like when you get your mental energy more clear more calm more under control um, your emotions settle and you'll be able to get more deep into your emotions understand your emotions in a much more deep way in a much more profound way in a much more calm way and really being able to use your emotions more deeply as well more soulfully 
and working with your emotions and it makes sense like I think that if I'm if I'm not mistaken I think that mental field is the most turbulent and then the emotional field is the one right over it and our mind really can can uh, create disturbance in that emotional field but if our mind if that that most tumultuous field the mental field is calm it really affects the emotions to be more calm they're very connected so yeah that also being like a cherry on top that not only is your mind coming into a much more and your nervous energy and your nervous system coming into a much more serene calm stable place but it's really calming and deepening your emotional field too so really cool beautiful beautiful love this all right if this resonated i always appreciate support with likes shares subscribes also grateful for kind and thoughtful comments um, side note if you enjoy astrology that's something that i have done for a very 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 long time and i put out an astrology newsletter which you can link to subscribe to that in my descriptions so the types of things you might find with that newsletter are like uh, month ahead astrology, new solar season, if planets are shifting, I'll send out a little thing. Um, and then if you upgrade to the paid one, all of those also will have like a uh, by sign horoscopes attached as well. Okay, I am sending so much love your way and so much beauty to you for this frequency shift or next chapter you are coming into and I will see you in future readings. Hello, pile three, my cactus pile. So for this reading, somewhat about a next, the point of the reading is to get into what is your next chapter or frequency shift you're coming into. But before we get to that, I really want to dive into some insight. I feel like when we come into those transitions, we also usually come into these deep insights and, and profound understandings about things that kind of creates that launch pad for the new, you know, transcending into something else, whether it's a frequency shift or a new journey or a next chapter, whatever that is. So cactus for you is the card that is going to kind of take us inward into whatever insight is starting to come through, what kind of understanding you're starting to come into right now. So for Cactus, and I'm going to be reading from the book for this, so it's the Nocturna Oracle. Cactus has armor, being closed off, and endurance. The prickly spines of the cactus make it seem uninvitable and inaccessible. Despite this, there is beauty in its ability to endure. While the spikes are unappealing, it provides protection for the plant, which can survive in the harshest environments with little water and nutrients. When the time is right, they bloom the most magnificent flowers. Interesting. I want to get some tarot cards to dive into what the understanding about this is. If this is like your essence, um, like you are a survivor of things or you've had to survive, but in learning kind of... Um, successful ways to do so you've also found ways to to protect yourself and find the nourishment you need and still despite kind of some harsh things knowing how to blossom I don't know I, th I think and I don't know if this is talking about something that you are going to be coming out of or just something you're coming into greater understanding about how you how you do things let's get some tarot cards well this has changed so I think you're changing from this I think this is where you've had to be and some reflection some insight is is clarifying why that is or clarifying even the knowledge that you've been having to do this sometimes we don't even realize we're like living in a survival mode um, so two of discs it's like um, starting to understand what your priorities are 
and how to balance life um, is helping you to see maybe where um, you've done a really good job of of despite your conditions being able to thoughtfully understand the priorities and through that over time really being able to pull yourself out of circumstances and still being able to flourish in life because you've had a lot of foresight you've had a lot of patience um, persistence understanding of, of priorities understanding of plans and ten of discs establishment yeah I get the sense that you are are really pulling yourself out of a hole <laughs> um, I think you've been in conditions that have been harsh um, in some way in some way for you whether that's been materially mentally emotionally physically a, a combination but this is like saying in reflecting back right now and gaining some insight this is saying you've done a really good job of persisting and pulling yourself up and you've done it you've like found that leg up you have found a way to kind of pull yourself out of a hole because you've really had some foresight and some planning and um, yeah and it's time for celebration it's like you're reaching a very different platform to live upon different conditions to live in but it's your hard work it's your force it, it's all you it's not like some miracle happened or somebody else came and saved the day like you you figured out how to thrive in certain conditions and with that figuring out how to survive you then piggybacked off of that and figured out how to thrive there and piggybacking off of the thriving in difficult conditions you're now springboarding to more fertile conditions and i think that's what the next chapter is going to be about is that new platform more fertile conditions um so wow like really beautiful work clearly that you've been doing um so hopefully that gave you some insight, but I, I do think you each have your own particular in, you know, circumstances. So it's worth journaling, looking back upon, coming into your own profound understandings about what you're coming out of. Because um, I think the more we understand what sort of um, mindsets and behaviors we use, to get ourselves out of something, I don't know, it just, it just strengthens us more. It just um, solidifies, you know, some self-efficacy and self-esteem and self-worth. And I think all of those self-things, you know, um, self-motivation, self-efficacy, self-esteem, self-love, all of the self-things you can think of by reflecting, you're going to be really solidifying these in, in new, big ways. Um, sort of like, if I got through that, I have total belief in myself and anything. Okay, so let's now do some cards to show what the new chapter is that's coming. Wow. This is the presence card. You do, I mean, this is just off of what I just said. You can hold anything. You can hold anything now and you can just make space for it and hold things with a deep presence. You are coming into holding yourself with deep presence, which allows you to really compose life with so much inspiration and so much beauty and so much fluidity so talk about a shift to something that's fertile that is fertile 
and then the fall. And this is a deck I'm also going to read from the guidebook. It's the Rooted Woman deck, and it has a lot to do with like the heroine's journey, um, different phases of that, different allies, different archetypes. So this is, I think, a stage of the hero's journey. Um, so let's check it out. Or maybe, let's see. Threshold to fall. Okay. When we heed the call to change and step off the threshold, imagining that we're going to set our feet firmly on the new road ahead of us, we might instead find ourselves stumbling, missing the path, and plummeting down into the dark. Let yourself fall. Sometimes we have to let ourselves fall in order to kickstart the process of transformation to which we've now committed ourselves. We have to let go of old ways of thinking, of old limits, to let the old ways die, to make room for the new, because once you've stepped across that threshold, it is for sure a severance, a kind of death. You can never go back to what you were before. There's no question that it's hard to fall forward into the wind, to let yourself topple off the edge of all that's known and familiar, even if that old life isn't serving you. It's a big step, this first movement toward wholeness. Uh, it means leaving behind the safety of familiar social su structures and supports. It's a massive letting go, but these are edge dwelling days. And if we want to live up to them, we must stand the, uh, there consciously aware of the troubled times and endangered planet and then of our own volition step across that first threshold. And at some point during the fall, you might find that you're flying after all. And this reminds me absolutely of those times in life where um, it's like things just seem to start falling apart. And at some point you're just like, whatever, fall apart. There's nothing like everything I do to try and keep things together is just not working. And I'm just I'm kind of sick of it too. Maybe this needs to fall apart. Maybe certain things need to fall into disrepair because I'm transcending certain patterns. And it's too hard to transcend that if these patterns are still stable. They have to fall apart. And I feel like this, more than the fall, is about you finding that you can soar and you can hold a lot and you can be in presence and um, really um, hold an energy of inspiration is what I'm feeling. And that, that inspiration be something that, um, that catches you, not some intangible thing that you that bubbles in and out and that's nice to have, but like, what does it actually lead to or do? It's like, um, no, now that you're stepping on certain fertile foundations, that inspiration is not just something that comes and goes, but is something that helps you to soar. And you're just like living a much more inspired life, but you're having to let aspects of your life fall apart because they were built upon this more harsh uh, survival foundation. Um, yeah, so it'll be an interesting, you know, this is to me talking about the initiation into the next step. This isn't giving a lot of clue about what's coming with the next step. It's sort of like, I'm just going to give you a clue about what to initially expect on that next chapter. It is a fall. It is letting things fall apart to actually recognize that you transcend what's falling. You've you, you are transcending and have transcended what needs to fall apart and you're going to find that you're soaring. Maybe the tarot will give us more clues about this next chapter, what it actually is leading to beyond just being in a more, I don't know, maybe the most we're supposed to know is just like more fertile circumstances, but we'll see what else we can. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just a lot of fertility, a lot of fertility, a lot of ability to 
to plant things, to grow things, to nurture and nourish things in the right, the conditions that feel right to you. Then we have two of swords. Um, I think at moments you're going to be in disbelief. And certain moments when you have to make decisions, you're going to have to really quiet your mind and listen more to intuition because your mind might have you remembering and and uh, making decisions based on patterns that develop due to the infertile conditions, harsh condition, harsh conditions. But I think you know, there's enough presence and awareness that you're in different conditions that you're finding a way to still your mind and tap into your intuition. So blocking your mind from like controlling decisions and really, yeah, reaching deep into your intuition until your mind can rewire. Um, but you, it's like your intuition has you until that happens. And then eight of, of discs dedication. And this feels like dedicating to new ways, really letting go of old expectation of life being hard, expectation of having to survive, expectation of things being, um, yeah, just difficult, infertile, um, a challenge, um, really having to dedicate to letting go of expecting that and allowing yourself to soar that's what it feels like so yeah i don't i don't have more than that of what this next chapter is other than like you're really in much more fertile surroundings or conditions if you can let go trust your intuition trust this is new foundations are real you can really soar here and like the fall card said, you may stumble with that a little at first because our, our patterns get really hardwired into us, right? Um, and don't, you know, be gentle about that. Um, don't beat yourself up if you fall sometimes with being a little bit more expecting of, of more fertile life conditions. Okay, to end, we are going to get you a message from the Priestesses of Light just to end with. Sacred breath and sound, life force and communication. Beautiful. I, I don't know why, but what's coming through to me about this is like when you're figuring out how to thrive in harsh conditions, you're really having to tune into what's real, what's practical, and your five tangible earthy 3D senses and coming into these more fertile conditions it's allowing those things to unwind a little bit to have more space in them to enjoy your senses a little bit more and that really helping to open up your more subtle senses really having a deeper kind of connection to resonance in the world and and an ability to breathe more freely um, so yeah more subtle senses more kind of life force moving through you with an easier breath um, it feels light like life is just lighter so i don't know what's happening why this is coming in it's probably different for all of you which is why i'm not getting you know messages about how why <laughs> um, but I guess just trust that it's coming, which makes sense because this is the fall. You do have to trust kind of diving into this. Um, I think if you were given too much information, that's sort of like the butterfly being cut out of the chrysalis and then it never gained the strength to fly, right? You have to kind of go through the challenge of, of um, shedding the past cycle and believing in what is coming towards you that does show more fertile ground, more stable, fertile, fresh, easy ground. So yeah, 
All right, gorgeous. Really, really beautiful new chapter coming in for you guys. I'm excited for you. Um, yeah, so this is where I'm gonna leave the reading. If it resonated, I always appreciate support with likes, shares, subscribes. Always grateful for kind and thoughtful comments. Side note, if you um, are into astrology, that's something I've done for a very, very long time and also do a lot of stuff with. And there is a newsletter I put out, an astrology newsletter, that you can link to subscribe to that in the descriptions. Um, that initial subscription is free. You can choose to upgrade to a paid one. It's stuff like astrology of the month ahead or a new solar season or a planet moving into a new sign. I do also, you know, send out newsletters for all sorts of things that happen. The paid version gets um, by sign horoscopes uh, attached to those as well. All right. Good luck on this new transition, this new chapter or frequency shift. And um, I wish you so much love and excitement and happiness with this. And um, yeah, I will See you in future readings. See you guys.